Star Wars. How would you play the devil's advocate in favor of the Sith? I've been training as a Padawan for a little while now, and I'm curious about the Sith. My master tells me that they are evil, but I can't help but wonder if I'm only hearing one side of the story. I've had a hard time believing that anyone is really just a mustache twirling villain who's up to no good. Surely the Sith don't believe they are villains. So, how would they justify their teachings? Do they argue that they are actually the good guys? Or are they really just unrepentantly evil, like my master says? First, Chancellor Palpatine. Remember back to your early teachings, Anakin. All those who gain power are afraid to lose it, even the Jedi. Anakin Skywalker. The Jedi use their power for good, Chancellor Palpatine. Good is a point of view, Anakin. The Sith and the Jedi are similar in almost every way, including their quest for greater power. Anakin Skywalker. The Sith rely on their passion for their strength. They think inward, only about themselves. Chancellor Palpatine. And the Jedi don't? Second, consider the Jedi Code. There is no emotion, there is peace. There is no ignorance, there is knowledge. There is no passion, there is serenity. There is no chaos, there is harmony. There is no death, there is the Force. Superficially, these all seem like reassuring cautionary notes. They're insidious like that. The Jedi encourage their order to feel nothing, no emotion. Feeling, emoting, being affected by what happens to us and others is the heart of empathy. The Jedi caution against it. The Jedi believe they are not ignorant, that they have the knowledge. This isn't a question of promoting the acquisition of knowledge, but it's a statement that they already have it. This is the height of hubris, and this way lies not but bigotry and arrogant presumption. No passion, no love, no stirring oneself to action while bearing witness to the suffering of others, no convictions. This is laudable. No chaos superficially seems good. Keep things stable, predictable, stagnant. Don't question, don't rock the boat. Keep your head down, do what you are told. Chaos is change. Change can be for the worse or for the better, but life is change. Without change, without chaos, nothing happens at all. Death is everywhere, you face it often. Pretending it doesn't exist, turning a blind eye to death and its consequences is utterly irresponsible. By contrast, consider the Sith Code. Peace is a lie. There is only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The force shall free me. Peace is a lie. When contrasted with passion, every single Jedi demonstrates a depth of feeling about something at some point. Consider Obi-Wan's anguished cries after he mutilated Anakin. Consider the fury in Mace Windu's eyes when he confronted then-Chancellor Palpatine. Consider the weary defeat in Yoda's retreat from his duel with Darth Sidious. Peace and conflict are one another's interregnum. They are both temporary, both impermanent. Seeking perpetual peace is a lie. The next several lines all connect to form a single sentiment. Your passions fuel you to overcome the chains that bind you from acting and succeeding in those actions. Confidence emerges from this. Changing the world emerges from this. Achieving one's dreams emerges from this. MLK Jr. was passionate about civil rights. His passion gave him strength to protest the injustices he saw. His courage and conviction and oratory proudness attracted followers and gained him the power to effect change. And, despite his assassination, he helped bring about tremendous positive change. He achieved victory and broke chains. Nothing in the Jedi Code correlates with his actions, these successes. Much is made of power being evil unto itself. Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Most everyone has heard of these phrases, and power certainly can corrupt. One need only look at the current state of political affairs in the U.S. to see the blatant corruption and powerful and financial moguls have wrought. But that requires a narrow definition of power. Power, socially, personally, is the ability to affect change. To disrupt the status quo. To see a wrong and decide to make things better. Without power, nothing happens. Amassing power, or yoking the collective power of a group, is the only way to do this. We've seen this throughout history, time and again. Granting then that power is not innately evil, but merely the means by which change is affected by an individual, you get this into discussions of individual good or evil. Is killing someone good or evil? It makes a difference if the killing happens in cold blood, or if it's done in defense of another life being threatened by the person you kill, doesn't it? We call the former murder, and the latter self-defense. Context is everything. Have there been evil Sith? 
Certainly. Have there also been evil Jedi? The peaceful republic that preceded the Clone Wars had, under the stewardship of the Jedi, achieved unprecedented levels of bureaucracy and corruption to the point where an independent entity could illegally blockade a world and the Republic did nothing to stop it. They sent some Jedi to negotiate. Period. It was a freaking blockade. Why didn't the Republic fleet, minimal though it may have been at the time, unleash unmitigated fear against such a blatant act? The Jedi were at the very least complicit, if not outright responsible, for the Republic reaching this low. Is that not itself evil, even though it is a mild, passive form of it? Perhaps we should look at Mace Windu and his entourage going to arrest Chancellor Palpatine without the authority of the Senate backing them. The Jedi staged a coup of the legal government of the Republic, entirely because Anakin identified Palpatine as a Sith Lord. How do we view countries where one religious group attacks another for control of the country, regardless of whatever history of conflict those religious groups have? But Palpatine orchestrated the Clone Wars. He was behind all that death, and the Jedi had what proof of that at the time they went to arrest him? None. They had Anakin telling them he thought Palpatine was a Sith Lord, period. Everything else was speculative. They went to arrest an elected official without evidence and without legal authority to do so on the grounds that he was identified to have a different religion and may have been connected to an ongoing conflict, over which he had presided on their side to that point. <laughs> ah, that's a fucking twisty way of looking at it. Good lordy. It goes on and on, and this all centers around one Sith Lord and the question of whether or not he was evil. There's nothing innate to the Sith which that makes them evil. Indeed, the values they hold are all about self-empowerment to bring about change and throw off oppression in all its forms. The Jedi, by contrast, are about stagnancy and suppression of the self. Which of those sounds more evil to you? Making Sith sound like the underdogs, isn't he? <laughs> you think as a Sith would. They believe their power comes from themselves, from their own fury driving the force to do their bidding. It is not so. But it would stand to reason that a Sith would feel the Jedi operate on the same precept. What you fail to account for, young Sith, is the living force. It is not commanded, as the power shown by Sith Lords would suggest. It simply opens the path for beings of great will. An ambitious smuggler will find he evades patrols despite all the odds. A ruthless bounty hunter prevails no matter the target he challenges. A frail diplomat takes down a monster feared galaxy wide. A dark Jedi lifts star cruisers in their burrs and flings them like toys. Any user of the Force knows this and takes advantage of it. They learn to focus their will such that the Force will bend reality and fate themselves to make it manifest. But the Force has a will of its own, far greater than any Jedi Master. While the Sith seek to pursue their ambition with the Force behind them, believing their power over fate makes them masters of it, the Jedi listen. They meditate on where the Force is going and where it wishes to go. What Sith and others see as arbitrary Jedi mandates, serving themselves or toting the Republic, is actually the Jedi working under the direction of the Force. They are always listening to it, for direction, guidance, encouragement, and strength. The Code teaches Jedi not to heed their own emotions, their own impulses, but to open up and let the Force guide their actions. When they are emptied of conflict and need, they are filled with something much greater. This is why the Sith and Dark Jedi never prevail against the Light. You can stop any man with a lightsaber and force tricks, but you cannot stop the force itself when its hands close in around you. Obi-Wan was blatantly a Sith and undercover though. He drops hints about it also. Only the Sith deal in absolutes. Sounds like an absolute statement to me. I think he groomed Anakin. Anakin under Qui-Gon was a happy-go-lucky chap. By the time we meet him after a few years on Obi-Wan, he's an arrogant, moody, murderous emo. But to what end? He's a Sith Lord. He embraces and loves chaos. He's just fucking with people. In A New Hope, Obi-Wan contrives his meeting with Darth Vader and lets him strike him down in order that he may become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Are there some Sith shenanigans going on here? Does he need to be struck down to gain force immortality? I don't think so. I think he knows he's an old Sith at the end of his years. He just wants to make a power play, to tip Luke towards the dark side and stir his emotions. Create some more chaos like a true Sith would. Ah, you say, he, but he failed. Luke became a Jedi and mastered his emotions. True. But not before he slaughtered hundreds if not thousands of people. In fact, Luke only really stops killing when in front of the Emperor. All based on events Obi-Wan contrived. Obi-Wan, Sith Lord. Fact. Vergare puts it nicely. Light and dark are no more than nomenclature. Words that describe how little we understand. What you call the dark side is the raw, unrestrained force itself. You call the dark side what you find when you give yourself over wholly to the force. To a Jedi is to control your passion, but Jedi control limits your power. Greatness requires the surrender of control, passion that is guided, not walled away. 
Leave your limits behind. If your surrender leads to slaughter, that is not because the force has darkness in it. It is because you do. The only dark side you need to fear is the one in your own heart. They get shit done. Revan, non-canon but still, defeated an enemy many viewed as unstoppable at the time, leaving them almost non-existent now. Darth Sidious unified the Republic's former territory under his empire, effectively uniting humanity almost entirely under his rule. Not to mention the planet-destroying space station he built, twice. The thing is, they usually fall to the dark side while they try to do these things. Darth Vader fell because he was trying to save someone he loved. Revan fell because he was trying to protect the galaxy. Sidious failed to solidify his power over the galaxy, that sort of thing. They reach a point when they see no option other than doing something evil, and justify it to themselves. Anakin thought the only way to save Padme lay in the dark side of the Force. Revan thought the only way to stop the Mandalorians was through Force. They justified these actions, and it became easier and easier for them to rationalize the evils they did as necessary, until they turned completely. They become comically evil, mustache-twirling villains often because they see no other way, or simply desire the power it brings. In Anakin's case, he became Vader, and turned back to the light when he saved his son from Sidious. Revan came back to the light when his mind was wiped, giving him a second chance. Full-blown Sith Lords are usually either beyond saving or simply don't want it anymore. Surely, the Sith don't believe they are villains. Sith lack this concept. When your entire outlook on your purpose in the galaxy is, take as much power for yourself as you can and be damned whoever gets in your way, you, by nature, become the antagonist to anyone who dares get in your way. Which for someone, like a Sith, who wants it all and more, is practically everyone in the galaxy. You know, this video does tie in nicely with the villains who see themselves as the heroes. <laughs> uh, the Sith may be, their own, may be the hero in their own story, if you ask enough of them. And I liked what, what one said about Obi-Wan being a Sith Lord. I found that kind of amusing. <laughs> but down in the comments below, uh, say what you think about the Sith being the good guys in their stories and what you think about that theory. Also, like, subscribe, the Thread Thrasher, and all their videos. If you'd like more like them, they should be coming out about one every day now, it seems like. Uh, this has been Garb Rub Adventure Reviews. Good talking to you, and I'll see you next time.